Welcome to the CodeCast Podcast. Real-world insights for your daily medical coding and billing processes. And now, here's your host, Terry Fletcher. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 167th episode of the CodeCast Podcast. My name is Terry Fletcher. I hope everyone is having or enjoying their holidays and had a nice Christmas and are ready to get back at it. And this is our last podcast of 2020 and the last Tuesday of December. So my top 10 list is going to be the top 10 holiday ICD-10 codes. I hope you find these fun and useful. Also, thanks to my down under listener, Claire. She gave me the idea on a LinkedIn post, but Claire, I did use most of my own. So I did this a couple of years ago and it's always fun to see what you can come up with and make sure that you're pretty accurate. Uh, Claire, I did find a couple of yours on your post that you may want to recheck, but it was a great idea. So ICD-10 has pretty much everything you could possibly want when it comes to uh, diagnoses, even some things that you thought might be a little funny. Also, later in the show, I'll comment on the current fee schedule, what you're in for, what's been delayed, what we're still waiting for, and so hopefully that'll help you as well. So let's get started. So number one, and actually I have 11, so I'm cheating a little bit. So number one is holiday relief care. So this is when uh, household care because it's not adequate due to a family member on vacation. So maybe home health comes in or you hire somebody to come in and help out and you want to bill for it. Z 75.5. This one, everyone's going to have this on their, on their coding. So R 63.2, that is what we call polyphagia. What is that? Excessive eating. So overeating at Christmas dinner. Yeah, you know who you are. <laughs> Z 73.2, number three, this is lack of relaxation and leisure time. So it's under the problems related to life management under the Z 73 series. But uh, how many of us felt that way? I mean, so far, we've had a week into it or a couple days of Christmas Eve and Christmas. And do you feel like you got to relax? Some of us actually don't. So I thought I'd throw that in there. Stress, not elsewhere classified. Uh, so Z73.3, kind of also in that realm of problems related to life management. F10.129, that would be drunkenness, unspecified. Okay, who had too much champagne or just too much anything? I know we had the red wine flowing for my family on Christmas and my daughter was here for a week, so it was actually really fun and Christmas Eve. Now, the next one, and we're at one, two, three, four, five, six. It's T fifty one point O X two. So actually hangover effects of ethanol or of alcohol, that is called intentional toxicity of ethanol. So again, it's in the T code section, which is injury to T fifty one point O X two. How about struck by a falling um, object? That's a Christmas tree or something to that effect. Maybe you try to take down your Christmas lights or put them up and they fell on you. Um, W2O, and that's the category. And then what if some of us are just tired? Just tired, R53, and then you might need another digit, but just that really helps just to, just to get that in there. Headache unspecified, and that's an R51. Here's one that absolutely is about Christmas. Fall from steps due to snow or ice. For those of you on the East Coast or in an area that um, has that kind of weather, I'm, I'm in California, so we've had cool weather for us, which is in the, the 50s and 60s, but very sunny. But the fall from steps due to snow or ice is W00.1. And then last but not least, for those of us that are those of you that are heading home and how to take a flight, motion sickness or air sickness, T 75.3. So those are the top 10 Christmas ICD-10 codes or holiday ICD-10 codes, I should say. And uh, hopefully you have those in your back pocket now. Now, a couple of things I wanted to kind of bring to your attention is this is something that I was actually not surprised about, but you know, kind of shocked because with all of the, when telehealth came out and we've had so much of the fraudulent things going on, so much of the scams, things like that, the Office of Inspector General just posted something and they posted it two days ago. And it's about the COVID-19 vaccine scams now and how to protect yourself and avoid it. So they came out with something that said, protect 
yourself and your patients for potential frauds concerning COVID-19 vaccines. Government and state officials will not call you to obtain personal information in order to receive the vaccine. You would actually have to go to a site because remember, it's two um, sessions. So it's not just one session. And here's what they say to protect yourself. And please talk to your patients about this. Same when the new Medicare cards came out. Do not give out your personal information to an unknown source or over the telephone and do not respond to or open phone texts or email links or unsolicited text messages about COVID-19. They also gave a tips line if you find that you, you're being scammed on it. And it's 800 447 8477. Again, 1 800 447 8477. I would post it to your patients. Just let them know because, uh, you know, your Medicare patients are very vulnerable vulnerable and they're you know going to have to deal with this so it's really uh, important to let them know not to if there's going to be any kind of a, an issue there okay so I know that some of you were asking me about the fee schedule and I wanted to just comment on it with you because it's oh my gosh it's been such a crazy time for the fee schedule so let me explain what's going on right now so I mentioned it, I think, a week or two ago on December 1st when the um, when CMS posted the final rule where our, our conversion factor, our multiplier, is taking our uh, conversion factor down to, so the fee schedule is going down from 3609 currently to 3241. Well, then there was this bill in the House, and it's the, on the COVID relief bill, and it was taking it, it actually was giving us a 3.75 increase so to 33.76, so about, you know, a little over a dollar 50. So that was a good thing. But the problem is, is that the COVID relief bill right now could be vetoed by the president on Monday, uh, or actually by the time you listen to this, it would have been yesterday. So make sure you check it out. And that basically is because there's so much foreign, they call it pork, which basically means they're just trying to, you know, get all this millions and billions of dollars for things that have nothing to do with COVID. So there's things in there like 85 million for Senate furniture and $10 million to uh, study the um, gender identity in Pakistan. And um, there was another, uh, what was it? 25 million to give, um, the house of representatives a raise. I was not happy about that one, but it just goes on and on. And so basically president Trump said, I'm not having any of this. Give me a clean bill, make it about COVID, make it about relief to the American people. He wants to raise the 600 to 2000 a person. And if they get rid of all this excessive spending, they can afford it. But unfortunately, both sides of the aisle are saying that that 2000 is too expensive. And then there's a bunch of nonsense. But I just wanted you to know that um, it's it, the bill right now may be it may not be going through as far as the relief bill. And so if that doesn't go through, you are looking at the 3241. If it does go through, we're getting a one year possible increase to the multiplier, the conversion factor to from th to 3.75% uh, to uh, 3376. But you got to keep looking for it. Again, it's supposed to be published on the 28th. This podcast will air on the 29th. So make sure that you know. And you know, for the following week, I'll let you know what happened if we know because since it's the last uh, four days of the month that I'm recording this, um, it, they would have to shut down the government as well. So you'll know. The other thing that was on the final rule, and this is the new complexity code. That's the G2211. So it's an add-on code for complex patients worth about $11. Well, this was something that used to be the GPC1X, and then they changed it to the G2211. Well, to pay for the increase because of the balanced budget situation, the bill actually delays the implementation of the complexity code, add-on code, for three years. And so it would not come out until, until 2024. And so there's two things. If the bill passes... We could get, see a 3%, 3.75% increase for one year to the fee schedule con conversion factor if and also a delay of the G2211. If it doesn't pass, the G code is supposed to take effect on January 1st, but the fee schedule would go down again 10.2% 10, 10 as expected. So just keep an eye on it. Make sure you know what the plan is. Otherwise, it, you could really uh, run into some trouble as far as what you're going to be reporting, what you're looking at versus what is reality. Okay. 
The coding question is brought to you today by Medical Economics, Smarter Business, Better Patient Care. Follow us for the latest news and viewpoints on premier care, specialty care, and industry happenings in the business of medicine and health IT. Um, also, I wanted to, to check out my article I'm going to have with them. It looks like it's going to be pushed to February, but I was just interviewed. And so um, it's basically called Leveraging the AR in a Physician's Practice. Also, I am involved in a new podcast called the NSCHBC, so the National Society of Certified Healthcare Business Consultants that I'm a part of, and it's called the EDGE Podcast. And so um, I do it once a month only for them and I record it for them and I'm the host. But the one I'm recording this week, I'm really excited about. You'll have to listen to it. It's for um, January and it's basically going to be two lawyers, their healthcare attorneys, and they're going to be role playing and doing how to, okay, I hope none of you get offended by this, but how to basically fire an employee during a pandemic, which is tough to do. We There's been some rule or issues, I should say, with, um, hiring and taking a PPP loan. But then sometimes, you know, you have employees that you need to let go, regardless of what's going on in the world. And how do you do it without with being legal and everything. So definitely check that out. It'll be on January 11th. And you can find that also on all downloadable pl- platforms. And let me know what you think. So I'm just going to be hosting that one. And, and uh, they will be uh, part of my kind of my guest speakers, if you will. So this one I solo podcast, I was thinking about bringing in a guest a while ago. But You know, we've had, like I said, 167 episodes. I've been doing this for a little over three years, and I personally really like solo podcasting. I don't have to count on anybody to show up to podcast with me, and I like talking to my audience and the feedback I get. So I really appreciate uh, everyone who, you know, kind of contributes to the things that I do on here and, and gives me the positive feedback. Which reminds me, if you get a chance, please drop me a rating and even a, a review. If you if you say nice things, <laughs> I appreciate that. But uh, that you know, Apple uh, Podcasts and anywhere you listen, I really appreciate any of the the positive things that you say. And and I always check it out. You know, we we definitely like to see that you know you're happy and things are good. So let me end with my personal tidbit this week. I'm so excited. I'm recording on a Sunday, and I just finished watching my Steelers win their 12th game of the season and clinch our AFC North title with a 12 and 3 record. So my WTF podcast for Steel City Underground is actually going to be positive. It's been so depressing the last three weeks because of three losses in a row. But we still need to win against Cleveland next week to get the second seed, especially now that uh, Kansas City has the first seed and Buffalo is in second. So we need to do what we can to do that. But I'm hopeful since Cleveland lost today and I'm so happy after that three game losing streak. So I'm just pretty excited about that. But for those of you, as we head into our last week of 2020, uh, as a healthcare professional, please go out with a bang, get caught up on your paperwork, make sure you're tabbing your 2021 CPT book, take the time to do that. It takes a couple of hours, because you also have to transfer your written notes from your book, you need to um, make sure you're going through and highlighting things to remember. Uh, one of the things I do is that if there's a code out of sequence, I put the name of it on the very top uh, of the page so that I can if I'm thumbing through, I can find it pretty quickly. And also make sure, again, that your providers and staff have been trained on the 2021 ENM rules for the office and other outpatient visits. And if you still need a, a personal webinar, let me know. Just email me directly at terryfletchercbc at aol.com. We have a couple of spots uh, coming up this week. And just let me know if you need that. You know, the, the three-part series is still available on demand. But if you want a personal one, which a lot of practices have done that. We've done that for, I think, 22, 27 practices uh, this fall. And it's been very helpful. So just let us know if you still haven't been trained. We'll get you on board. All right, everyone. Make it a great day and a great week. And I'll talk to you next week on the CodeCast podcast. Thanks for listening. For more information on medical coding, billing, auditing and compliance, including how to hire Terry, follow Terry on Twitter at TerryCoder1 or visit her website at www.terryfletcher.net. Podcast producer Joe Kuzma, music producer Assassin Music. <laughs>